Electra four transistor super deluxe tape recorder with speed control model TP500 this is like a miniature Japanese made um, reel to reel player I wouldn't say it's new in the box but whoever had it kept it in the box early Japanese electronics I don't know how a tape recorder can work with four, just four transistors, how it can record and play with just four transistors. Now I believe it even has batteries in it. It's kind of cool when you close it, the handles lock the lid down. Totally portable. So we got earphone and mic. We got rewind, let's see. Play record. So I could do a little better there. Play record, stop, rewind forward volume minimum maximum a little speaker right there speed control I don't do much with tape recorders they're not really my interest but this did pique my interest because it's very cool early cassette record not cassette what would you call that miniature reel to reel wonder where you even get that tape anymore. So I said to him, Bailey, why don't you go away? He said, thanks very much, but I'm planning to stay. I'm going to sit on that branch for the rest of the day. So I said to him, Brady, you look so distraught. Every single night, lunging upward from my addiction while observing Dorothy Kish. Dorothy Kish! Dorothy Kish! What a dish! What a dish! Let the uh, YouTube content ID get a hold of that. Yeah, check that out, content ID. Definitely not. Doesn't appear there's anything on side two. All right. Interesting. 
It's a sweet mic. Sure, an SM58 can't touch that. It's interesting. It's got a nine volt here, and it's got two. It's got two C cells, and a nine volt. What do we have here? A lapel clip for that super high quality mic. Really? I've never seen a situation where the batteries had bo both positives pointed at each other. Is that really how that goes together? It sure is. I wonder if they're in parallel. I wonder if this negative wraps around over to this negative. Boy, nothing but the best quality batteries. These things are like, they don't weigh anything. I mean, they're, they're like, they're hollow. So, let's... So, is the the motor of one and a half volts and then the electronics are nine volts? Let's open this thing. I'm curious to see how they open it and test the capacitors at least it's old it's got to have bad capacitors in it right you could test these batteries uh, test check it out yeah let's open it this is kind of very unique so to start off yes the batteries are just paralleled and I didn't no, that was a good idea to do with alkaline or carbon batteries. I didn't know you could parallel cells like that. At least I don't ever think I've seen that before. So a nice rheostat here, wire wound rheostat for the speed control. Um, the, it's amazing how minimal this thing is. Look at the motor drive setup. So that would be play I guess it does not use a capstan motor at all that would be play it would just drive that rubber edge on the roller and then for rewind it would drive that edge so I guess what it does is it it yeah it rocks the motor wow look at that Talk about precision stability for low wow and flutter. This is almost some of the finest engineering I think I've ever seen in a consumer grade tape play product. We have a high performance speaker. And here's the four transistor amplifier. So it's got push pull audio output germanium, and then it's got a preamp and a driver stage, and lots of these crappy early Japanese electrolytic capacitors, but very serviceable. Wow, this this is just That, I, I, I'm just without words. Okay. This thing just keeps getting better. So, here, we'll take a look at the motor from the top first. So, it's basically sitting on this spring here. This right here is a permanent magnet for erase. So when you flip this to record, I'm trying not to laugh. Screw the erase head, that would be too much. Usually when you record a tape, you have to apply a bias tone to it. And there's no way that this thing generates a bias tone. So I wonder how they're doing it. They're just backfeeding audio into the head to record on the tape. 
I mean, I guess that works, but, you know. Yeah, this is... Such ingenuity. Wow, our Chino battery is at almost 10 volts. I think the easiest way to do this is to take a known good capacitor like this counterfeit Sprague and 47 microfarad and start it playing and just touch the capacitor, parallel it with each capacitor that's here. Uh, I don't have an in-circuit ESR tester right now that's easily accessible. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see. Gotta love the proximity of that magnet. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We will try and record after I do a quick electrolytic check here. Okay. I probably need two hands to do this. Let me... Alright, what we're looking for is an increase in volume or some change to indicate High torque motors getting in the way. You hear it gets a little bit louder when I jump that one, so that one's a little tired. Oh. That one's way open. Hear the hiss? Where did the audio go? Did I burn something out? Or did we run out of tape here? Let's rewind it. Oh, yeah. Ch oh, nice. Here we go. Pause for the airplane. I rewound the tape. Okay, so we got open capacitors in this, which is to be expected for Japanese equipment. Well, any equipment of this age, or, you know, these small electrolytics. So let's recap. Why not? I'll grab an old circuit board and we'll pull some caps off of it. All right, this is a circuit board out of some TV I burned. Um, the tape player has four 10 microfarads in it, and this is exactly what we got here these black ones so I'm gonna pull these off and this is a pretty new this thing was a pretty new TV so I'm gonna pull them off of here the 10 microfarads and we'll go from there this is how the 10 microfarad Sam Young capacitors out of the TV are testing they're all testing about the same which is the ESR is about one around 1.8 ohms. 
Okay, the recapping has been complete. I double checked to make sure I put them all in the right way. Here are all the old ones. Let's check these. This should be comical. 161 picofarads. Sounds legit. Wow. This one's 20 microfarads and the ESR is 0.15K, so 150 ohms. That's pretty good. That one's almost 10 microfarads, but again, it's 150 ohms ESR. What is it with the? Does this thing just like max out at 150 ohms and stop there? Okay, this one here was supposed to be 100 microfarads. And yeah, it's 138, but at 13 ohms, it should be down a, around less than a half an ohm. So let's see. Let's hear how it sounds with five new capacitors in it. This thing should be ready to rock the party. Oh yeah. You could hear the mic there. That must have been something somebody recorded back when this thing was new. It's probably all they did. They probably recorded just that and said, oh, hell no, and put it away. Okay. So here we go. Record. Check one, two. Check one two, stability control, check one two, wow and flutter test, check one two. Oh, nice. check one two. Oh yeah, I'm ready to cut new album here. So what kind of speed, hold on a second, what kind of variability does this have? I mean, is it like... Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our uh, YouTube app, then we're going to go to Trending. Giddy Up, official music video, The Ace Family. Now, now, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we, could, we could do some of this. I, Yeah, let's see what happens. What happened there? Is the phone too frequency too high? What's going on here? It appears this mic went bad because the first time it recorded my voice, now I do, it's not even doing that. And if I bang on it, it'll kind of come in. I think these are crystal mics. They kind of work on the same premise as a crystal phono cartridge. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to go straight line in here for maximum sound quality. Okay, here we go. Record, record, play. for maximum sound quality of our mumble wrap. Look at that smooth, silky operation right there. Okay, that should be enough of that. Play, rewind. Ooh. Silky smooth operation. Oh yeah. Crystal clear. Copyright free music. Let's try some of this. We won't over modulate it so much. Okay, we're trying some of this copyright free music at a lower level just to see what you know it sounds like and the speed control doesn't seem to do anything which is very disappointing are we sick of this thing yet okay this clip has an almost uh, dubstep type sound to it I'm sure this was designed for dubstep. Look at how they actually use cardboard in the construction of this. this. You know, this thing actually makes a Crosley look good, I think. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm recording a little bit of this dubstep, duty-free dance thingy on here, and then... I'll leave you with that at the end. I wish I knew what year this was, but it appears I'm too stupid to find a date code on this. I don't know. Late 60s, early 70s, made in Japan, uh, Electra brand, four transistor, super deluxe tape recorder with speed control that doesn't work. Ooh, accessories. Oh, it's recording an advertisement now onto it. That should be good. On flutter test, check. How'd I line that up so good? 